Welcome back, everyone, to Lumen Field here in Seattle. It's Bronco football as we get set to rejoin the action in quarter number three. Trying for it with Piron. Oh, look at the juke. And he's got Rome. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. In motion goes Patrick. They run it with P. Wright on first down. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Now second and five. Up the middle, here's Pirine. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. Well, you always hate to see injuries, especially tough here in week one. Just hoping this is nothing serious. We'll take a quick timeout. The Broncos on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run again with P. Ryan. And the Broncos are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lava has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Throwing Nix. And this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Those are the types of plays in these moments they were hoping for from this young rookie, able to put him up here in the fourth quarter. How about the kid? You just mentioned it. The fourth quarter. This is when you have to make those winning plays. That's what he just did. Doesn't ensure anything, but he certainly gave his team a heck of a chance, didn't he? Lutz with the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. That time, a nine-play drive, and Cortland Sutton able to finish things off with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. Well, some good games around the league here early in week one. And this one shaping up to be as good as any of them as we come up on a first and ten. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And he edges forward but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield... Their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Here's Smith. To the sideline and incomplete. 
I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. Well, yeah, once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Throwing now is Gino. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. And that's a ball that he is going to want to keep his first career interception in the National Football League. And I love what teams do when that happens. You bring the ball to the sideline, the equipment guy grabs it, he puts a piece of tape on it, writes on it so that you know what it is, and then they tuck it away so that you can have it for later and put it on your mantle. Pretty good deal for him right there. Now he's eager to get back out on the field and get his second one. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. They'll hand it to P. Ryan. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. And his fine afternoon on the ground continues. That last run going to put him over 100 yards for the ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. One play action, here's Nix. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he gets it all the way down to the three. A huge play there for Denver, and even 40 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process, and really... It's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. P. Ryan. Going to be hit and met at the line of scrimmage. They get him down at the three. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. This is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? Clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't want to get in the end zone too early here. No, not at all, because you may leave an opening that could come back and get you. A big play, if you think about it right now in this season opener. It's third and goal. They'll try and throw. Here's Nix toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, Brandon, we see why it's a team game there because there's a side relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, that's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him and forced the incompletion. You're right. He had him open just a split second too late on the release. Now, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And that last turnover could have proven more costly, but their defense only gave up three. But now answering with a field goal doesn't do them much on this drive. They need to try and find the end zone. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. They're complete to Smith and Jigba. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. They'll get that to Charbonnet. And he is going to lose yardage here. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. 
They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, here's Walker. And he is going to lose yardage here. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. Boy, hard to catch your breath. Another big play looming. Fourth and three. Smith's going to throw it. And that's complete to Brown. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the offense as he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. Smith to throw. He completes this to Walker. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. Here comes second down. Now to the ground, here's Walker. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Well, this one's had a season's worth of thrills already, and it's still week one. Here's third down now. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Just the one timeout remaining as they try to navigate this two-minute drill. First and ten. Here's Smith. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Throw out wide to Walker. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? they got to make sure... I'm... And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Baron Browning in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. The decision made for him. They've got to go. It's fourth down. It's complete. Swings it out to his running back. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Broncos are close to finishing off this football game. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. While the medical staff checks on him, we'll step aside in this week one contest. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. Now the Broncos are going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. That one looks like he'll throw here. And it's nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. 
Hand off here for P. Ryan. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So a big one coming now for Will Lutz. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, CD, always a little extra excitement for week one. And one of our early window games here in week one on a Sunday comes to a close. Good to be back in the booth with you, my friend. And it's good to be back in the booth with you as well. And we know that not everyone's going to start the season 1-0, and right? Half the league is going to have a loss on their record. But everyone's got to build off of that opener. And how many coaches tell us every single year, you make your most progress between week one and week two. We'll see how both of these teams progress the rest of the season. So for the Broncos, hey, you get a win, you get it on the road.